welcome to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. Hi, everybody. G'day. Welcome to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. Hello. We got, um, hey, we got uh, we got Anthony here from uh, Relief. Yes, he's the product development manager. Yes, and right. also Mull. Thank you. Yes, uh, cafe. Welcome. That's a bit of a medical cannabis patient friendly. How would we frame it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's Relief's, uh, I guess, step into the more lifestyle scene with cannabis and lifestyle. We're trying is a good to, word. Yeah, yeah. We're we're trying to, I guess branch out and and kind of you know bring a new culture to to not even just you know medicinal cannabis or things like that but just a healthier lifestyle so it's a non-alcoholic bar which promotes you know zero alcohol drinks and things like that so we're trying to you know gary the the ceo uh, my, my boss uh he's his vision for for mal is to you know create a healthier lifestyle for for youth um, with zero alcohol and then obviously, you know, the, the cannabis culture, keeping them away from things like cigarettes and, and, and all of that sort of stuff, keeping them away from harder drugs and things too. So, um, yeah, Mull, Mull is something that is, a, it's a, it's a project that's been in the works for a long time and a lot of amazing people have put so much effort into it and it's coming to light. Um, we had a soft launch last week and it was really, really cool. Um, the place looks fantastic. Gary's trying to keep that like late seventies, early eighties vibe, uh, that old school vibe. So there's a couple of surfboard tables. There's some some cool artwork. It's painted painted in hempcrete, which is which is awesome as well. Wow. Um, very cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, it's it's an awesome place. The the what I want it to be, I want it to just be a, a comfortable environment that people can come and explore cannabis and learn more about things like terpenes and and different parts of the cannabis plant and how they could potentially harness the medicinal properties of the plant, how they need to harness it. You know, so we have a range of. Um, terpene cocktails, which mimic the strain profiles of some of our relief uh, branded uh, cannabis. So we have our critical Kush, our, our slurry cane and our green gelato terpene drinks. And, mm. you know, the whole goal behind that is to put these things in front of people and then spark conversation and spark thought and, and, and you know, start to move forward with the movement of cannabis being something that can be so helpful if harnessed correctly. And I think one of the most important things to start understanding and learning about cannabis is things like terpene profiles and, you know, Could being able to, to introduce those to people in that way, in that sort of cocktail, non-alcoholic drink way and go, hey, you know, drink this green gelato cocktail. It might potentially, uh, you know, give you a little bit more energy. And the reason why it does mm. that is because this, you know, cocktail has a lot of uh, pinene in it or lemonine and it's been seen to, you know, have neuroprotective properties or potential anxiolytic properties and serotonin and dopamine interaction. Do you have like cards for the drink that said what those benefits would be? Yeah, potentially. I mean, like, look, that obviously cool. there's certain things you can't make straight up claims or anything like that. But, um, you know, the, the, the idea is to, is to say that. How do the um, nootropic companies get away with it? They use some wording and it's like easy as and you're all good. <laughs> TGA won't fuck with you. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. There is some wordings that you can use where it's like not, scientifically proven yeah, but yeah. like there's something that you can make it like expert says <laughs> <laughs> unreal well i mean i don't know if, if, you, if you find out tell me um no i know but... doctors <laughs> yeah. no but um yeah mull mull is mull is really cool but um thank you guys so much for for having me on here it's it's oh. i've been so excited to, so to jump on here and, and have a conversation with you about all things medicinal cannabis all things industry um and update you guys on what relief is doing and and i i don't know i guess just have a conversation and show people that, you know, there are different movements going on within the industry um, and there mm. are things happening and there are people, there are good people doing good things mm. um, and, you know, we are going to progress and that things are going to move forward and all of the, I guess, chatter that you hear on forums like Reddit and, you know, other people that kind of go around talking shit, um, you know, kind of put a dampen on that and just kind of go hey you know we're we're, we're in the be we're at the beginning of, of something it's, amazing it's hectic how many people that are on the um forums and the communities oh. that aren't like really in the industry but are having much commentary oh, on it. I do I mean listen to anyone who who listens to this podcast uh, take whatever you read on reddit as a grain of salt I mean I'll, I'll use an example I read a thread the other day on Relief's new. So Relief has released uh, like a new company called Mac Two, and the whole rate, like the whole goal for that company is choice flour at mates rates. So we're trying to bring better quality flour to patients at better 
prices. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We don't want cannabis to be so expensive. We want it to be accessible. We don't want people to be spending a week's paycheck just on their medication. You know, we want people to have affordable, good quality things. Anyway, um, you know, you release you release the product, and and there's people who start reviewing it, obviously, as as you would. And there was this one particular thread where this this person had you know reviewed the flower, and they loved it, but they caught they said that the the cultivar was Miracle Alien Dog, and that's just not true. Like mm-hmm. straight up from the from mm-hmm. the head, you know what I mean? That's just not true. Um, and you know, he was so he or she was so certain, and 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 they and they were like, yeah, no, it's it's this strain, it does this, and this is what's going. And I'm like, where are you getting this information? Yeah, like, have you where, tested it genetically? Like, uh, wh- who's telling you this? Because mm. that's just not right at all. And and you know, you knowing what I know about the industry and, and being in the position I've, I'm blessed enough to be in, um, I have conversations with people just like you guys would. You know, owners of companies and and, and owners of clinics and dispensaries mm. and this, that, and the other. And you just then you go back onto these forums and you read fifty percent of what's on there, and you're like, this is just not. This is not what's happening. It's really hard to gauge who yeah. is talking shit as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know? I, I I got called out that I was a shill because I was promoting a catalyst mm. a little bit, like because I got invited to be part of it when I did the Varaski trial. Okay. There's a little medical trial for the Varaski flower, which is fucking nice. Shout it out. Yep. Um, can group grown, but packaged by Antura. Okay, uh, Antura. Okay. Yeah, and it was a twenty percent, but it's now. A 26%. Hey. But I haven't tried the 26 yet. Okay. But anywho, um, I was on there and then I got invited to Catalyst. Have you seen Catalyst? Yes. Yes, yes I yeah. have seen Catalyst. Yeah. So Tom Brown and Will, I don't know his last name, but Will, he's cool. Mm. Um, he bought me a beer. Shout out to Will. Fuck yeah, you're a G. Shout out, Will. UIC. <laughs> UIC was fun. Um, but uh, where was I going with that? Um and they invited me to Catalyst and I really liked it because you saw the terpene profiles, you saw your percentages yeah. and all that. But what was cool with Catalyst that I thought was nice, it, it just, you didn't have user reviews. Mm. They just said what they were feeling and how it affected them and mm. like how they felt, was it dry or this? So you get like an idea percentage wise of what's going on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I really liked that. Plus it had all the product information and then you could look at other flowers and see what's up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I thought it was... um. Pretty cool how it was all set up. And Absolutely. I got called out for it because apparently I'm a shill for them because I'm trying to shill them over Canna reviews. And I'm like, fucking, I use both. I don't like, but I kind of preferred Catalyst. It looked cleaner to me. Yeah. Yeah. Canna reviews to me is like really I mean, just a bit too much going on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But I still use both, mm. you know, because like I still like to read the comments, but I don't necessarily want them all the time. And yeah. it's like, anyway. I mean, I mean, they're both, they're both you know, forms of, of content and education. And I think yeah, that's the most exactly. important thing that the industry needs moving forward is education and understanding mm-hmm. and access just, to info. Yeah, know? access yeah. to info and just and just people who are able to articulate that info in a way that is going to be receptive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we need like advocates. <clears throat> yeah. We just uh, you know uh, for example, so many people chase high THC percentage mm. right and so Fools. many people like one thing that I've seen I've been I've been with relief for you know two and a bit years and I've been on the floor in the dispensary working in the clinics and you know now I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in the position that I'm in um, but I all one of the most consistent things that I hear is people coming in going oh I want the strong stuff oh you know I'm, I'm, I've got a tolerance of this so I need higher I need a higher percentage I need a higher percentage and it's like mate you know step back for a second and understand all of the components of the plant that are contributing to the entourage effect that you're feeling and and understand that you know there are so many components that you could take advantage of to get what you want to get not just thc you know um and and i think that being able to convey that information to people and convey things like hey terpenes are really important you know if you're somebody who is looking for symptomatic relief of pain you would look Mm. at something more mercy and heavy because mercy has been seen to have opioid like activity inside of your body sure you know what i mean like it's actually you know approaching it as a whole plant absolutely absolutely because because there's so many facets to it and and that's one thing that like i try to do uh at relief because we've got the clinics and the dispensaries right and then in the dispensary we have like a retail section and being the product development manager for me it's kind of like i want to be able to pair products with what you know, patients are coming in and getting from the from the pharmacist in order to enhance their experience. You know what I mean? So we we sell over the counter terpenes, and when we sell terpenes that have been put together 
uh, in a way that mm. is geared towards achieving symptomatic relief of anxiety, yeah. of pain, yeah. of, of this or that, you know, and then being able to kind of have a conversation with a patient say, hey, link this up with this and it's going to drive your experience potentially this way because of X, Y, and Z. And just somebody having that conversation with you, you know, they walk away from that and they're like, hey, you know, maybe I don't need to try, a, you know, a high THC strain. Maybe I can go home and Google that. What he said, that was kind of interesting. Maybe I can like, you know, watch a video about that. I don't know. It'll just spark some thought. And then this, this, this whole industry and this whole culture and this movement will move forward because people will be having more conversations that are constructive, not right. just, oh, to get high. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Cause don't get me wrong. You know, sh you know, um, getting stoned is fantastic. Yeah. You know, like using cannabis is great and using it for whatever reason you want to use it for. Amen. Good luck. You know, um, but I think for the people who are really trying to take advantage of it medicinally, uh, there is so much more to understand than just THC percentage and indica sativa. Mm. Um, and I think that there are even on a recreational level yeah, too, yeah, right? You, if you're a rec smoker, you got to find you know what's what's that balance for you where you're relaxed but still mm. energized. Mm. You got to understand why that one time I smoked weed, I was super super mm. super anxious, and that other time I felt like I was on a cloud. Yeah. You know, why? Why is that? There are different things contributing. And another that. time, I just was dead on the couch. There you go. What's funny about all of that is that not only is it, in many ways, like a subjective mm. thing that we're like counting in on, because mm. a lot of people just have different neurochemistry, different bodies. Of course. There's also the element of like, we don't still, we don't have like a complete picture of how this plant works. It's too mm. complex, mm. and there's no, too no, many variations. Been, it's been it's been around for longer than we have, and yeah. it's barely yeah. been touched. You know, and it's I mean? it's kind of funny. You have people at like the height <clears throat> of scientific development still mm. working all of these things out, and it might take 20, 30, 40 years for it to really like filter down into the general population of of recreational medicinal yep. um, users. Yep. And that to me is really interesting because it's almost as if we have waves of uh, expanded consciousness yep. or understanding in yep. the issue, yep. which is super sick. Like, uh, yeah, I agree. And I think I think there are, and this is what, I'm, and this is another thing that you know I was talking to you boys about this before we we started recording. But I think there one one of my little like side goals in this industry is to I know so many people you know, who have so much knowledge and understanding for this plan and, and what it can do and how it can potentially help people. And they just need an opportunity, yeah. you know, and a lot yeah. of them, a lot of them don't have that opportunity because, you know, they, they, they don't have the degree or they don't have the this or they don't have the that, but they have so much knowledge that can be harnessed and that can, just, true. you know, and they just need an environment to flourish in it, right. you know? Mm. Um, yeah. Shout out to all my Melbourne homies. Shout out to LL, shout out to Alex, um, shout out Fino, shout out Ermac, Tom, all you boys, you know, all the people that I know that, you know, have so much knowledge and so much understanding, um, you know, they, they will have their opportunity one day and yeah. they will be that able to enter this well industry too. and when they enter this industry and people like that, like-minded people, um, it's really, really going to step forward and that whole education side of things is really going to come to light. So I'm super excited for that and I'm super excited to bring I'm people I'm glad that, like, we're able to have this conversation here and now. Yeah. Just you sitting in this room, like yeah. coming over from Melbourne from a different part of Australia yeah. where similar things are happening because you have, to me, like not just an optimistic, but like a very proactive view yeah. of how things are going to unfold. Thank you. And um, I think we need that. We need a vision like as a community in order to actually see the kind of changes that we want to see. Yeah. We need to dream them up and then create them in yeah. our action. Hey, listen, man, like for me, it, it's, you know, I'm around doctors and, and professionals all the time around mm -hmm. pharmacists, I'm around all these people. And it's like, bro, I'm just somebody who has a passion for the plant yeah. and who, who wants to make a difference. You know, I have, I have a background in, in science at university and I remember spending so much of my time in these lectures and, and spending so many, so many hours in classes just looking around being like, these people just, you know, they, they don't know what they want to do with their lives. And I know that I want to help people, but I, I don't, you know, this is just, this, this avenue of science isn't for me. This sure. avenue of medicine isn't for me. I, I, you know, and I, I had this obsession with the medicinal side of cannabis. Um, <laughs> And you and me both. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, I, I think that, 
you know, being able to share that is is a blessing. And, yeah. and then being able to have conversations with people and then bring people on board and, and just spread all the love. And, and, and you know, it's, it's cool being able to collaborate with someone like a doctor who is so like you know, a certain type of personality, oh, comes yeah. from a certain background, and then be able to sit with them and then talk about terpenes and just, you know, have this really, really intense conversation and have them come away from that and go, wow, mm. like... I just think about that so differently now. Like I, I don't have as much of the stigma in my head as I did. And it's like, that's all I want. That's yeah, all yeah. I want. You know what I mean? I'm curious, how are most doctors in terms of being responsive? Like, is it 90% positive, 50%? Uh, it's definitely gotten better. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I first started, the doctors and pharmacists that I was around were still very conservative and very mm. old school. And because of that, they lacked the proper knowledge and understanding and counsel. Yeah, for patients, you know, and that was something that really niggled at me for a long time. I was niggled like, at everyone. If you got, yeah, if you guys just just stop stopped for a second, just took the ego away for just two seconds, and just just listened to mm. what you were saying to people, right? You know, because you were saying it to all, to people, you know, you just didn't believe it a hundred percent. But it definitely now, you know, especially the, the team at Relief, all the doctors are so positive and so understanding and so accepting and and just they make it so easy for mm. people to come in and and be honest and one of the things that you see is a lot of the time like you know oh have you spoken to your normal gp about this no no i'm just you know, you know okay so you, you, you don't feel comfortable being completely honest with your gp that's a problem it is you yeah, know, and that's mm. such a problem. Man. And it's like, still such a huge stigma. It, it is, it is. Mm. But, but then there's the people that fucking do and the GP's like, no. Yeah. You yeah, know, I've, like, I've yeah. done that at least twice. Yeah, These yeah. These two different GPs. Yeah. And they've been like, well, the other one was like, oh, I can, I can source it from you, but it's going to be like a couple of products. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. don't give you the same kind of experience as these dedicated clinics. And it's, it's, it's even like, it's Kick the principle backs. as well. It's <clears> the principle, you know what I mean? Like if someone can't be honest about medicinal cannabis, for example, what else aren't they being honest about? Oh, what else yeah. can't they talk to their doctor about? Like you are a healthcare professional. Your job is to help people. You know, for your sure. job isn't to tell someone how to live their life or that what they should, should be doing. That is so scary because there's this, you know, generally accepted view that, uh, both physical and mental health were kind of in a crisis, mm. um, you know, all across the world. Yeah. In Western countries too. And so there's this issue, I think, where we can go, okay, those are the reported numbers. Mm. Think about all of the stuff that isn't actually making it to the doctor. Or if it does, it's too late and then it leads to serious chronic or acute health problems. Exactly. Or death. And exactly. so there's this... Yeah, the, the fact that we live in a world which is just alienated from itself, mm. it has this need to reconnect to what medicine actually is. Exactly. And I think that's one of the best things about, you know, the doctors at Relief that I work with at the moment is, is the fact that because they are so uh, are open and understanding and positive and accepting and just giving people the floor mm. to be who they are and talk right. about what they want, health in general has progressed for these patients, you know what for I mean? Sure. Not just their medical cannabis use, but just their health in general. Like they don't have as much chronic pain anymore because of X, Y, and Z, because they've been able to be honest about yeah. exactly what they're doing. Man. Yeah, the amount of like trauma we hold in the body, exactly. the amount of pain we hold in exactly. the body. Anxiety patients, right? Right. Could you imagine the anxiety you have when you've got illegal weed? Yeah. Because you're just like, well, I'm always at risk here. Yeah. Technically. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking shit. And then they've just got natural anxiety from whatever yeah. else. And then they get the script and it's like, as soon as you get that script, that that other anxiety gone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know? And it's also coming out of a consultation with a doctor and not feeling like you've been judged. Mm. That's one yep. of the best feelings, I think. And that's like, one of, like our, our uh, CMO, his name's, you know, Dr. Mahindu. He's awesome, man. Like he's, he, everyone who comes out of his door has a smile on their face. And it's not even just because, you know, they've been prescribed the cannabis they want or whatever. They've come out and they're like, man, that guy, like, he let he I, I did felt comfortable. You know, I could be honest. I didn't have to hide anything. I didn't have to lie about anything. You know, <clears throat> I was I was okay. And I'm like, that's that's what it's all about, man. And that's what this industry has the potential to do better than the conventional medical pharmaceutical industry. It's right. probably why there's a big stigma attached and we keep it. Like, yeah, but that's that's what know, I'm that's, here. That's, that's, that's fight. Man, that's exactly right. That if my one like I don't I don't care about, you know, any I don't care about the money, I don't care about any of that other stuff i just want this avenue of medicine to be an avenue that people get to come to and actually be honest and potentially mm. you know treat and and prevent 
things as opposed mm. to just treat things and manage. You know what I mean? Like you want you want to you want to be able to work and get to a point where you don't experience as much anxiety as you usually would in the moments where it consumes you. You know, of course, everyone's going to have a baseline level of anxiety. That's life. And that's just rolling with it. You know what I mean? Like that's everyone's battle every day. Everyone's going to deal with that sort of stuff. But being able to get it to a point where it's manageable and you're happy because the goal is happiness, Mm. you know? Yeah, people who are in those like clinical ranges of anxiety Mm. and depression, Sometimes they do need something to help them buy. Exactly. Like it's important for many exactly. people. And, and, That's and looking cool. at the conventional treatment methods and basically being numbed. I mean, you know, me personally having a background in mental health, that's one of my biggest fascinations with cannabis and yeah. mental health. I have yeah. my own mental health journey. I'm sure everyone else does, right? For sure. Um, and for me, being on all of the SSRIs and all of the different antipsychotics and this, that and the other, I never, ever felt better. I just didn't feel anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and I remember going into therapy and I remember having conversations and trying to work through insecurities and work through issues that I had in my life and not actually being able to make real progress because I couldn't process it. Right. You know, and if you can't process your emotions, you're never ever going to be able to work through them. Um, And then, you know, going on the cannabis journey and being a young kid who was exposed to PGRs, you know what I mean? And, and smoked cannabis that, you know, was really detrimental to my short term memory and this and that for a certain period of time. But then smoking cannabis that made me feel amazing and made me feel really happy and made me feel uplifted and actually motivated me to study and motivated me to go out and be social. And it's like, whoa, why, why is this, why is there two massive ends of the spectrum here? Like what's going on? And then you start looking into it and you start studying it and you started looking at the endocannabinoid system and the difference between proper quality cannabis and things like PGR and street cannabis. And Mm -hmm. then you look at the studies that go against, you know, uh, cannabis and all of the studies, like all of the Australian studies that look at, you know, uh, cannabis induced psychosis and things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of it. So flawed though, because a lot of them just come from people who have been using cannabis on the street. What cannabis are they using, man? If you're smoking, if you're smoking bikey weed, that's been doused, like I've heard some horror stories, man. You know, I've heard people who harvest massive amounts of cannabis and then mix it with Gravox to Mm. make it heavier. And yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. This is this is interesting because I think when you're talking about um, just substances, drugs mm. in general, mm. you kind of run into this situation where, yeah, a lot of the time it's the additives, it's the things that people have done in order to profit. Mm. It's just the fact that we live in a completely unregulated environment, exactly under prohibition. Yeah, it creates all these issues. And then how are you supposed to know? It's like before you isolate that there's lead in the fucking petrol mm. how do you know that what's causing all of the cancer and the fucking aggression in young kids yeah it's the similar kind of thing and, exactly. and so it's almost like when people say oh we don't have enough research we don't have enough study around mm. the benefits of this thing mm. i mean there's plenty of studies that do go into that but of course because we have all of these negative societal cultural impacts weighing down on everybody yeah. it's hard to separate like oh this person um has yes felt like you know like this has impacted or benefited their lives. Whereas, okay, what about the people who, um, you know, enter into some state of psychosis yeah. or enter into, have yeah. some predisposition to schizophrenia? Yeah. All yeah. of that is true. And we ought to like acknowledge the the complex nuances in terms of how medicine works, right? Mm. In many ways, mm. I mean, for, for many people, SSRIs don't work. Antipsychotics ruin people's lives in yeah. many cases. <laughs> yeah. So I want to be clear about that. But I think there are, there are people who... Um, a, a particular medicine will, a pharmaceutical will do them good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And um, so yeah. it's interesting when we look at like that, people are able to go, oh yeah, we're just going to hit people with a bunch of pharmaceutical drugs and hopefully um, you'll get better. Mm. That's kind of the idea. Feeling sad, have this chemical mm. inserted into your brain and it might work. Yeah. And if it doesn't, try another one. Yeah. Um, so that's the situation with pharmaceuticals, whereas with cannabis, we have to wait like 50, 100 years before the incontrovertible fucking evidence yeah. comes out. Yeah. And that's ultimately, it's the same thing as like uh, the global uh, fossil fuel industry, like yeah. suppressing the actual knowledge around what's happening yeah. with climate change. Yeah. It's the same thing yeah. with the tobacco industry. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's these it's fucking pharmaceutical corporations. The, the word here is it's old money. <laughs> it's old money. That's Precisely. what it is, actually. It's just old money. So this is the interesting thing. That's the past. I mean, it's still our present, right? Don't get me wrong. But how do we envision, like, what do you think when it comes to specifically the Aussie medical cannabis industry into the future? Like, what is the, the thing that you're most looking forward to in that regard? Uh, I, I, think, I think, 
you know, moving forward, I, I like I said to you, you know, people coming on board and people entering the industry who have a passion and, and want to be here for the right reasons. I think that's what I'm most excited for. I think what I'm most excited for is really building a culture and a community of people who genuinely think that this plant has medicinal properties and then spends time talking to people about it and and educating people about it and mm -hmm. just sharing the knowledge that they've accumulated and then hopefully getting to a point where we have a large group of people who have this one understanding and we can then you know i, I guess get to the point where we'll be like hey this is a real thing mm -hmm. like 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 look at this recognize this you know well today the big news the big news that dropped literally this morning um, there were studies, I don't know who by, but in Australia, cannabis is now more socially acceptable than tobacco. I saw that. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's cool. some fucking news. That's awesome. Me and Mitch were talking about it a little bit earlier today. And it's yeah. just like, it's, I was saying it's pretty much just due to, in my opinion, the millennials are now starting to outnumber. Yes. The generation. Where, where mm. It's, it's, that's all starting. And it's like, what's interesting though, is that the boomers come from this era where in their teens, they were historically quite progressive when it came to the issue of cannabis mm. it was their parents who were saying yeah true you know what i mean it feels like they've internalized that message and that stigma from their parents but this generation i think is going to while people might get more conservative as they age whatever there'll be a point in time where that will just rub conservative off will change right yeah. like conservative will be like i'm okay with weed but i'm not okay if we can I take ecstasy like, i feel know? like that's like, already the case for most australians yeah. i don't think that you know, many Australians have, unless they have um, a predisposition to like real conservative, like or religious moral values, yeah. Yeah. they're usually not looking down. I know some on pretty it. hardcore Christians that are like anti-trans and all sorts of shit, and they've now accepted cannabis. She's just I mean, gotten a script. That's you know? what I'm like, saying. Even in happening. the case of people who who do have it and helped. hold those kinds of beliefs, yeah, yeah, the whole picture is shifting, and that's probably because they know somebody yeah. who benefits from it. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. Like, that's it. Like, cannabis, cannabis is for everyone. It's just understanding how to use it and understand. What part Maybe of not the for everyone. I don't think it's for everyone. I think it's for people who need it. Yeah. Right. Okay, like, okay. I, I I don't like the analogy of everyone because I look at cannabis as like a useful tool, but not a necessary one. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. There are people who live without it and are living happy, joyful lives. Like then they're quite balanced in themselves. So it's yeah. like. I wouldn't say it's for everyone, but I think it can be enjoyed by everyone. Mm. You know, but I think. But when I say for everyone, I mean like, for example, you don't have to use any sort of THC. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't have to use any sort of THC to to use medicinal cannabis and 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 take advantage of what it may or may not do for you. You could just use the terpenes. You could just use the minor cannabinoids. You you know what I mean? Like you could just take advantage of things like CBG or CBN. You know, or you could, or you could muck around with CBD and then a combination of different terpenes. Like, I think that many people, maybe not all people, but many people, you know, can harness a certain aspect of the plan yeah. and use that to enhance their lives in a positive way. And I think that that comes from just having, you know, more and more education. You know what I mean? I think mm. obviously it's a proven fact that we all have an endocannabinoid system, mm. yes. and I think the endocannabinoid system plays a massive part in many. Um, physiological functions inside of our body. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people would benefit from supplementing their endocannabinoid system with something, sure. you know, whether, whether it be a phytocannabinoid or whether it be See, something else. What's interesting about that is that the more that we learn about how the system works, because mm. it is incredibly complex yeah. and the kinds of inputs that we're putting into it are very, very nuanced, have lots of differences involved. Yeah. Yeah. Like given that there will be more of an understanding of that, from the academic and the medical side, mm. all of a sudden the field opens up for like how precisely can this be used? Mm. Like there's so many different mm. use cases yeah. that are going to emerge and that could be like, you know, how um, a certain plant is turned into a class of medicines yeah. Yeah. in the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. And the thing is, it doesn't necessarily have to be as controlled, but for many people, that's the kind of experience that they're going to want, yeah. well, a controlled one. Something you know? that I've always thought of, like if I was like going into my like cyberpunk world, <laughs> like say 2050, yeah, 2060, yeah, 2099 or whatever. Yeah, 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 whatever you want to call it. And like, where does cannabis evolve to? I always had this idea of like an asthma puffer that pumps a vape into you that's like t a terpene with like precise um, compounds. So you're like, it might be like a CBD, 
CBD, uh, CBG, CBD like blend, and it, for some reason it does something it's very just like particular. A or a spray like or something. think of it like a fucking potion from a. I game. mean, it's getting there. It's getting there. I mean, I mean, there is uh, there there are companies. There's one particular company that I know of, right? And they've been able to essentially c- like create CBD like exact exactly the same CBD molecule as you'd find on the cannabis plant from uh, citrus peels using yeah, terpenes. Wow. No you have to manipulate terpenes and yeah. turn them into cannabinoids. Like that's crazy. Did you know CBD into THC is like just one? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like yeah, yeah. and they, it all starts from one base cannabinoid, and they all, I guess, oxidize into another one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think CBN is really cool. Yeah, CBN is something that people need to start mucking around with a lot more. I think. I think that its sedative properties and its potential analgesic properties are really, really yeah exciting. Potentially a new like um, anti topical that could like really numb pain. Absolutely, and, stuff. and it's not, and it's not. Psychoactive, you know yeah. what I mean. So I, I think it's cool. I like. Given I, that people are like breeding naturally, you haven't even unlocked the full potential of like what biogenetics could probably do. Exactly, in this regard, right? exactly. And that's another thing that the medicinal cannabis industry in Australia, like moving forward, it's just going to get better because the practices are going to get better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at the moment, we've got this big thing where a lot of uh, flour on the market has to go through some form of radiation before it can yeah. be. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and we all know that irradiation volatizes very, very valuable monoterpenes. Sure. And and it's and it's like you know you're ruining so much of what the plant could potentially do for people. Mm, mm. You know, and there are certain companies that are working around that. I know Sativite. Shout out Sativite. It's doing some cool things at the moment. They've got their nitrogen seal packaging. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, they don't. Um radiate it because of that yeah yeah they want to yeah. they want to keep i don't know therapy. if they're going to be allowed to come 2023 i think there's some regulation changing i mean that's the thing but like i hope not because it is nice yeah oh. i kind of wish i kind of wish it wasn't like oh we have to sterilize everything coming in but like yeah. you know the the thing about that is that it kind of does it might take a bit of <laughs> time coming in it, it might take a bit of time for us to actually go okay what is the standard that makes sense. What is the yep. sensible standard? Because yep. people yep. in, like, for instance, the PM, there are people in the Labor Party who see the common sense approach to cannabis and they recognize that they want to work towards that in yep. that direction. Yeah. But people who are at the, the very top of the party, um, who are in leadership positions, they're not going to acknowledge that, like, oh, there's something in this. Yeah. And it's not just like a... It, it's, it's too um, difficult for them to address the public in a matter of fact way about this plant yeah. because there's just so many fucking lies about it yeah. that circulate. Yeah. And it's so hard to break those lies down to, yeah, I, I remember, I remember. You have when, to like get rid of everyone's record. Oh man. You know? And then it's like, oh yeah. And the people that we put in for like a really long time, we probably have to compensate them. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's fucked. very true. I, but then I, at the yeah. same time, like you'd be saving fucking hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Because at the moment, what, right now we're just locking up people who, non-violent drug offenses basically yeah yeah it's fucked up like the thing is if we were able to approach it with a little bit more maturity yeah which probably will happen there's just like um anything it it has this kind of uh push and pull this tug Mm. of war that's Mm. happening between all these different segments of society yeah and it, it might not be a linear progression. That's what I think about. Yeah, like it yeah, could, yeah. it could happen fucking next year, yeah. but then it could be ten or twenty years in the future because we have to go down this long and winding road. Mm. And by ten or twenty years in the future, I'm really talking about like a, a broad mainstream medical acceptance yeah. and recreational legalization. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm more optimistic. Me too. I, I am too. But like, yeah. I, I'm not going to count it out. What if there's some kind of counter revolution against well, no, these, he, he, these sorts of values? Here's the counter revolution. I mean, Hopefully the TGA is not listening, but <laughs> <laughs> TGA could just come down hard. That's what like, I'm saying. There's definitely... And there could be a, a, a counter reaction to the TGA coming down hard, but it might take several years to unravel that coil, you know? It's weird because if the TGA comes down, they're destroying business here. Mm, that's so true. if you're destroying business, is that good for the economy? No. no. So then should this continue? <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of the problem. Like because this wheel's kind of being pushed, I don't know. I, I think maybe there's a good chance we've kind of pushed it too far where they can't stop it now. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, it's obviously a steamroll, but I don't feel like there might be as many bumps anymore. Yeah, I think that's one big thing that, 
that has progressed us a lot quicker than a lot of people thought it would is the fact that there's been such a massive increase in people jumping on the medicinal cannabis yeah. program. That's put so much pressure on the TGA mm. and they don't have the manpower to deal with all of the TGA approvals and yeah. all of the yeah. all of the things that come along with, you know, the vice grip that they have. Mm. So they had to loosen things up. For sure. Know? And that's what I mean. Like if we keep talking, if we keep educating, if we keep moving this thing forward and showing people that it is it is a very valuable tool and medicine that if used correctly can be very beneficial, then we're just going to keep pushing that agenda yep. and, and people and the TGA is going to have to step back. Yeah, ultimately, no what would be great is if um, people in this community, in this industry, could yeah. develop alliances and partnerships That's with it. the folks who are legislating. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we don't have to deal with the TGA. We can deal with, like, bureaucrats who know cannabis. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like an, a cannabis agency. Yeah. That would be That's great. Yeah. Hey, if any politician who is for cannabis wants to have a conversation with a young kid who's passionate, reach out to me. I'd <laughs> love to have a, a few conversation. Meat also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear from you. Good. Yeah, I want to hear from you. I want to have a conversation <laughs> with you guys. Let's talk terpene. Hell yeah. <laughs> we need to. Well, I know. I know there was um, a local MP, I think from state government, that went to the MedCan facility. I hey, know, photos and stuff. And I was cool. like, that's cool. Um, and I asked Craig, um, like, is she a supporter? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. Seemed pretty well behind us. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It definitely is. It's slowly moving. Yeah. It's slowly it moving. It is. And things, and things are getting better. I mean, you know, where we've partnered up with Cookies. Yeah, is, big. That's big news. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I want, I want to talk about that. Just, just, yeah, go just in, for a go minute, in. just for a minute, because we need a few oh, minutes. Yeah, this one's, this one's for, this one's for all the homies. Um, but yeah, so relief uh, is is bringing cookies to Australia, and this for me is so incredible for so many reasons. Obviously, there is the, you know, there is the initial like we get to try burners stuff like yeah holy shit everything that we've just been on the sidelines watching america enjoy for years all of us now get to get to i don't know if it will be quite that because it's going to have to come from canada (laughs) not us so yes um Yes, but but we still get to try, you know, the Gary Paytons, the cereal milks, the apples yeah. and bananas. Oh yeah, and, and all that. And weed's pretty good too. Yeah, like. yeah, and and you know, and, and it's awesome because re- re- like Mull is releasing flowers alongside cookies. So the whole initiative behind that is to step the market up in terms of quality and be like, hey, listen, we're done with this old six month cured irradiated, stored in terrible heat, terrible light, conditioned cannabis. Mm. We want the cannabis on the market. If people are going to pay $150 for 10 grams of cannabis, they are going to pay for $150 like of the best cannabis. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's the whole thing. Cookies is going to unleash a brand new wave of cultivars into the market that people are going to get to take advantage of. And there are going to be cultivars that are going to be unreal for pain. There are going to be cultivars that are going to be amazing for dealing with things like ADHD. Right. You know? And then Mull is going to release flowers alongside that with that whole mate's rates vibe going on as well, trying to bring down the prices on the market. How do you, how do you mean Mull? Mull, mull, like the so, cafe, but like, how yes. are they releasing that? So under Mac Two, which, oh, okay, is, which yeah. is part of Relief, yeah, um, and they will be, yeah. So the flowers will be released alongside, and it's, the whole goal is to step up the the quality in the industry and be like, guys, like, you know, we want it to be top standard all the time. You know, like I feel like the black market was, you know, down here, and then this is where we want it to be, and then the medical market brought us fifty percent there. And there's still that gap we've got to close with so yeah. many things, yeah. practices, this, that, and the other. And and one of the ones that I want to focus on is is quality of, of medicine. Yeah. You know, and and having the opportunity to work with the cookies team and to work with people who I think are the people that need to be in the industry in Australia. You know, sure. you, you talk to them, they're they're like minded, they're passionate, they care about the plant, they care about people, you know, they pay attention to detail because it matters. You know, and it's like this is the vibe that we need in this industry, and this is the vibe that is starting to come more to life. You know, back in the day, it was a lot more uh, controlled, medical, very, very, you know, by the book, this, that, and now it's progressed to a point where people are starting to, you know, drop the shoulders and 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 look at it from a different perspective and and accumulate different parts of cannabis, not just the medical side of things, but the culture. And so, because you need to, in order to be like 
a good practitioner and in order to get it right, you have to understand all of it. You can't just understand yeah. what THC and CBD is and how the endocannabinoid system works. Right. You've got to understand that people are smoking things like PGRs and what those plants do to people and the fact that you getting somebody, transitioning somebody from the black market over to the medicinal program, before you even give them you know, a review, or, you've done them a solid because you have removed the, those chemicals from mm-hmm. them. You have removed their access to things that are going to kill brain cells. Well, that I are mean, going to be to, to be honest, there's probably heavy metals in a lot of the PGR that's yeah, being yeah. absolutely. And so, even the smallest <coughs> amount of like mercury or yeah. lead or whatever the fuck is in there, yeah. is going to have really long term detrimental Hell effects. Yeah. Absolutely, I am definitely fucked from the six months we smoked bucket bongs, yeah. and it was definitely mostly PGR. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was like Man, maybe that, a one that to has ruined my life. Yeah. Yeah. Like my potential just dropped Where? 10 points, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Done. And, and that's the thing. That's like, and now it's like... And it's not like you don't get that from other parts of the yeah. kind of modern system that we yeah. live in. You yeah. know, like our food, the soil is like containing less nutrients. So yeah. the food that we eat yeah. is less nutritious. Yeah. And it's like, when is this going to get to a point where it leads to societal collapse? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. I mean, look, chronic illness is f- like rising at exponential rates <laughs> yeah. for multiple different exactly. reasons. Exactly. You know, that's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I hear you. I hear you. But yeah, I, I, that's, I don't know. I just, cookies is an opportunity to say to the entire market, hey, we need to up our game. Everyone needs to up their mm-hmm. game, you know, and we need to make sure that we are on it in every way, shape, and form. We need to keep improving our, you know, post harvest practices. We need to keep improving our storage practices and we need to keep improving our growing methods, everything. The genetics we choose, the, the cultivars that we play around with, the chemovars that we decide to put out there and, you know, market for the, you know, potential an- anti anxiety yep. use or potential yep. pain. Like, you need to be able to explain and, and, and have cultivars that are that are truly driven towards, you know, sedation or analgesia mm-hmm. or whatever. Not just, oh like, yeah, this might do this, it might do that. Like and that comes with things like cookies. You know, because the cookie genetics are genetics that have been worked for sure. years and they've been bred to express high amounts of certain terpenes. What is your opinion on like because I think the US is probably one of the best examples of that at the moment. Yeah. Just the insane level of development that has occurred between maybe stuff that was existing in the in the states in the 70s mm-hmm. versus what exists today and the high levels of potency well of these yeah cannabinoids. yeah high levels of potency that's 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 one thing like and this is why like i hopefully hopefully we do it in australia we do it i think we will do it differently because we're a little bit more conservative but yeah. in america it's gotten to the point now where you, you're seeing these like 40 plus percent yeah, strains, yeah, and, they're exactly. not, and they're not strains that have been genetically bred to be 40 plus they are strains that have been bred you know, in the high 30s and then they've been sprayed with distillate to make them even stronger. And that just, like, takes people for a spin, man. You don't need that. You know, I'm one of the biggest cannabis advocates in the entire world that you'll ever meet and I'll put my hand up and say, 42% THC, stay away from that sort of shit. You know what's interesting? We had a a conversation. (laughs) We had a conversation with the alt-med guy, Mitch, and he said that basically dabs were too much and he doesn't really see much of a use case for them yeah. either recreationally maybe medicinally there's more of a of a of an argument there but he he believed that that high level of concentration yeah. the dab isn't actually necessary because yeah. there's a lot of other experiences it's, you can get with cannabis that just don't need to go that high. Weed. Yeah, it's yeah. the crack of weed. I mean, it but, but it's is. also like if you if you have an extract that is you know solventless, live rosin based, the terps on that are going to taste absolutely. Yeah, and that's it's the thing. Taste. I think that's why people. But are do you so know where dabs are best? Exactly. Where dabs are best? You ever see the? Um, so you, we all know carts, right? Yes. Well, have you ever seen the uh, pens that are a little coil? They're a little vaporizer. You just put the dab on yeah, and you yeah. just do it on. And like then you hit it. Yeah, yeah. There's the Puffco pens and all of those. And the whole reason is it's like well, the fucking, the carts are shit because you're just throwing them in the trash after. Yeah. You know, these are like, it's a reusable thing. You're going to use it for fucking till it dies. More environmentally friendly. You know, yeah. but also uh, it's a ceramic bowl. So you've yep. got a clean bowl. You can always clean it out and yep. bloody... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that I can see as a bit of a future, but the problem is if you're giving people that concentrate, they abuse it, mm. 
right? Mm. But uh, I, I have heard of people who have like crazy chronic pain where they've like torn a rotator cuff and yeah. dabs help heaps. Yeah, yeah. Right? But like I, do shit think, like that, I do think but extracts and concentrates have a place for sure. When I've had I dabs, agree, yeah. I remember I was walking for or forward, but I thought my face was on the back of my head. <laughs> like, That's and an I was experience. like, that was fucked. And then I remember at the same time when I sat on the couch, my tongue just kept rolling in the back of my mouth. Like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, Full on. Yeah. Full on, yeah. Dabs are intense. That was a tangine dab. It yeah. was the tastiest shit I've ever had. Yeah. Cannabis related. Cool. That's it was awesome. Good. It was so much citrus. It was delicious. That's like, what you want, bro. Tasted like you had a mandarin. Yeah. Mm. You want those citrus. Those mandarin turf. You like the mandarin turf, huh? Yeah, mandarin turfs mandarin. usually make me very anxious. One yeah, of the best strains I've ever had was... Um, uh, what was it called? It was a. It was grown in Mullum somewhere there, and it was like <laughs> outdoor, and it was like Mandarin cross diesel. It was like a Mandarin diesel. Okay, I think, something in that regard. Medcan did a Mandarin cookies for a hot minute. It was okay. I didn't yeah. love it. Yeah, it was yeah. very okay. Yeah, that's ethos. It was a little too dry. So, yeah, yeah. See, this is what I mean. Post harvest practices, you know, mm-hmm. like those little things that we, as an industry, not I'm not like singling anyone out, man. Um, all of us need to just do better, always, always do better and Step always focus on what's important and what's important mm-hmm. is helping people. You know what I mean? What's important is is like spreading the the truths of this plant and this community and just furthering and furthering the industry in that way. I think mm-hmm. there are so many people like me in this industry. Yeah, and, who want to elevate the whole playing field. That's it, that's yeah. it. And yeah, of course, you've got your big boys and girls who are, you know, the, the ones who are on it for financial reasons. But I promise you guys, all you guys out there who are frustrated with the system right now, all of you guys who are a little bit upset with the way that things are gone for them or the way that things are gone for your mate or this, that, like have patience and, and work with us because there are a lot of good people doing good things every day and we hear you and we see the problems and we're trying to fix it and we are trying to do nothing but make this this industry go the direction that it should go you know and that's kind of like what you do a lot with relief right well that's that's the goal yeah like my goal is to just help people and just give people more accessibility to things that are going to potentially help them you know mm-hmm. it, whether that be product or education you know like sitting in and talking to people about terpene profiles like you talk to anyone i work with they're going to be like oh man anthony like that guy does not shut up about like all that sort of shit like he just <laughs> goes on about it all day and like yeah, I do. You sure. need to meet um, Cameron from Heyday. Yeah. Do you know Cameron? No, but I'd, I'd like to. He's, know he's TikTok famous. He's got like, I don't there know, two, three hundred thousand followers on TikTok. And it was weird. That's how I found him. Okay. And bloody, he was on TikTok. He just says motivational, spiritual stuff. It's like fantastic. And he's got a podcast, all yep. that. Yep. But I clicked his Instagram and he said, and it said uh, plant nurse, yep. like with a flower. And I was like, what? Yeah. What? And then I like Googled him around and he, he was a nurse at, at um, Heyday up on the sunny coast. Yeah. And then I went to UAC and I fucking got to meet him. And That's it was so like cool. seeing like a TikTok celebrity, like yeah. in the person, you know, like any influencer. But then also he's attached to cannabis. And um, the, he has one video that I loved and I connected with her. He was like, ah, school tells you like all sorts of things, what you can be, what you can't mm. be. And, you know, when you just follow your passion, you just end up becoming a cannabis nurse, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's how I got here. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, far out, man. I I have not, you know, I don't I don't have an amazing resume. I don't have a whole bunch of amazing references behind me. I'm just someone who who just had a, had a, had a passion and just kept going for it. So, how did you connect and I'm not to saying relief? I've, oh, I it was luck, man. It was yeah, of course, it always it was. It was so uh, a dispensary was opening up uh, in my suburb. And, and my mother saw it and she ran home and she was like, Anthony. And I remember this was like, you know, beginning of COVID, I was real depressed because I, I didn't, like I said to you, like I struggled with the university. I didn't really like the headspace that it put me in. I didn't really like the direction that it was grooming me for. And I never really got along with anybody that I interacted with there, the professors and things like that. I was very, you know, talk to me about CB1 receptor activity and they'd be like, what? what? Um, I was talking to my girlfriend today about university. Yeah. I went for the four years, right? Yeah. And um, I was like, you know, I remember it even less than I remember school. Yeah. And you're at school, like high school for five years. Exactly. And I'm like, what the fuck? Exactly. Like, uni was just like, done. Exactly. Okay, on with my life. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And and, and mom, you know, uh, came home and she was like, Anthony, like, you know, you've had this passion for this plant for such a long time that you, you've had to keep to yourself. This is your opportunity. 
Like, this is, this is your chance. And I was like, you're right. One so shot, I, yeah, one I, opportunity. Yeah, I ran down there, sent an email, you know, Would did you my take thing. it? <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. Um, <laughs> I just needed that. Uh, yeah, you got well, it. Well, you're Italian, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, I am. So, Thank Mom's you. spaghetti. That's it. Yeah. Tony. <laughs> exactly, Tony. Um, hey, Tony, eat your meatball. <laughs> my brother Tom's going to love that one. Tony <laughs> calls me Tony. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, I, I, I had an interview with the people there and, and I was lucky enough to, to get selected and I every day I, th- I, I pinch myself and I'm thankful and every day I you know get to work and I'm just so fucking like so happy to be there because it's like I, I get to do something that sets my heart on fire and I think that's what people should strive for whether it doesn't have to be cannabis obviously it's whatever whatever your whatever your hobbies are whoever listening to this right now is whatever your hobbies are just go for it man and don't listen to don't listen to what anyone tells you and don't listen to anybody that's trying to tell you how to, to run your shit. Run it the way you want to run it, you know. And the moment I started doing that and the moment I realized how important that it was to think like that, um, you know, that's where I got to finally start living my life and start, and start getting over the anxieties and start dealing with the depressions and then using cannabis as a tool and working through my head and being able to understand it even more and then mature as a person. Like that's the whole goal. You know, mm, the um, cannabis journey is a weird one. Yeah. It's like degenerate to sick cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go through it. You got to go through your ups and downs. And, you know, um, man, I'm, I'm just at the beginning and I'm going to make a whole bunch of mistakes and there's going to be a whole bunch that's going to happen in front of me. But I'm super <laughs> excited and I'm really, really blessed to be able to work at a company like Relief and work with the people that I work with. And I think that this company is an opportunity to, to do good. Yeah. And um, that's the whole goal, man. So... For anyone out there that, um, you know, is a patient of ours, bless and shout out to you guys. Anybody out there that's thinking about jumping on the medicinal program, you don't have to, you know, I'm not trying to plug relief, obviously, but have a conversation with with people, good people. Mm. You know, you can come down and talk to us, talk to these boys, you know, look at the content that's, that's going. There's good people good and putting good content out there and doing good things. And, and I think that they're the ones that, that need to step into the light and they're the ones that deserve the recognition. You know what I mean? All my homies and all your homies and everyone that we know and love. And you, mate, because you. you're an amazing communicator. You've Thank got this you. on lock, so. Thank you. I yeah. really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I, um, I, I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm good at talking. <laughs> um, so, it's a skill, eh? Thank you. So, yeah. I can I, relate I, with you to that. Thank you. So, it's the I, wog in us. It's yeah, just like, exactly. ah, you just keep talking shit. You know? Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm just It shit flows. <laughs> it just flows. No, nah, but hey, if I, can, if I can inspire someone to even just, you know, think about cannabis differently for a second and not, and not think about it as a as such a damaging thing then i'm happy i've done my job you know mm, that's that's all i sure. want to do all i want to do yeah i think what's uh, nice with what you've said kind of there as well is um you kind of seize your opportunity within the cannabis space you kind of created it yourself like you put yourself into there thank you and that's kind of what i tell anyone who's like trying to get anywhere in this cannabis industry like i know heaps of people want to be in this space. Like Mm. they really do. Mm. And like, I'm not quite as involved as you, but I work with a variety of cannabis based businesses. So I found my own way to kind of enter the space. I'm not top shit. No, 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 no. Right. But here's what I'm kind of saying. It's more, we created our jobs. Yeah. We found a way to create like our value within where we wanted to be. Be yourself. Yeah, yeah, more or yourself. less. Be and, yourself. you know, push on what you want and just keep fucking going yeah. until you like pole on that place. Yeah. You're like, I want to work here. Or I want to yeah. help this person. My goal is to marry the culture of cannabis <laughs> with the medicine and the science of it. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I got I got a couple of big brothers. Shout out to my, my brothers, Chris and Omar. Uh, Omar owns a company called Westside Apparel. And Westside Apparel does a lot of work with the community. Um, and they work with a lot of, you know, uh, underprivileged kids and teenagers and things like that. And I think that, you know, being able to talk their language, but then blend, you know, medicine into that and then being able to educate them on cannabis and being able to educate them on safe practices of cannabis. And then also being able to show doctors and, and medical professionals that, hey, like the 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 behavior that these kids have right now, like it, it's it's it can be, you can help that. You can help them. Don't condemn them. Don't shun them. Mm. Help them. And that's my goal. Like I, 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 I have, you know, experience in the street and I have experience with medicine. I've gone to uni, this, that, and the other. And I want to just marry it together because I think that there are positives on both ends. And I think that, the cannabis industry needs a blend of both. 
Mm. And it can't be one or the it other. It needs to mix as it well. It needs yeah. to. It needs to. You know, and that's the whole goal with relief and mull. Mull is the more lifestyle. You know, break away from relief, and that's more trying to bring people in, like I said, and educate them on 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 things like non alcoholic drinks and and safe practices. Yeah, I love that they're non alcoholic. That's so sick. It's good. Yeah, yeah it's it makes good. sense. I we, we've talked about it a few times. I've got a bit of a dream of a similar cafe vibe, but I want <laughs> it to be like a vape lounge and. Hey. Um, board game venue but i want it cigar club vibes where it's like the old leather kind of seating like the upholstery and everything yeah well i can't say too much but stay tuned to mull man stay you get next time you guys come down to melbourne yeah absolutely yeah we'll check it out we've got a few people to see in melbourne yeah so definitely sometime soon yeah you gotta come kick it with me in melbourne oh we're gonna do part two over there me you and a friend indeed we we could hit up that place so fucking well yeah yeah we could smash it it there even (laughs) Wouldn't be a bad we event. could host an event at a friend in needs. Yeah, that'd be cool. He's a fucking sick smoke shop. <laughs> is it? Sick yeah. Sick fucking smoke shop. Damo cool. is an absolute, like, yeah. 12 out of 10 legend. And like, he would know so many people in the community and the culture. Yeah, he does. And this is what I mean. Like, being able to bring them in and, and, you know, all those people who are, you know, using black market cannabis and they're too afraid to try the medical stuff. Like, it's 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 okay. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's what I want. I want them to be able to see that it's okay to come over here. And, and have these conversations and fuck around with some stuff that, you know, isn't PGR and isn't from a potential criminal or a bikey mm. or somebody who's used Gravox. And don't stress too much on the money too, hey. Exactly. If you're smoking shitty weed, you're going to save a bunch of money. Yeah. I remember going through queues in two, three days. Yeah. Now I go yeah. through a queue, more, it takes longer than a week. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I like, wholeheartedly look, and it doesn't even, and this is what I mean, like people are like, oh, you know, medical cannabis is stronger, so like you'll need less of it. It's not so much that it's stronger, it's more that you have- it's effective. Uh, yeah, but you have access to, to multiple cultivars and mm-hmm. finding a cultivar that marries with your endocannabinoid system. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like you, you could use the Medcan CC01, the Afghan Kush, you know, or you could use the Relief Green Gelato and, you know, you and I could both use the same flower and feel completely different. One could really enjoy it, one might not really enjoy it, but we have the opportunity to explore that. Mm. and then find one that just ticks all the boxes for us and go, man, my anxiety just melts away with this one. Or, oh, my chronic pain, like my inflammation from all the years of doing ridiculous lifts at the gym, trying to be cool and trying to be stupid and egotistical with my friends, uh, all that back pain is gone. You know, like, oh my God, that's so mm. cool. That's that's what it's all about. And that's what, you know, I think the medical industry, is, it's a, such a big opportunity for people to come in and find something and find a cultivar that works for them. And it might be a fucking 18% THC strain. And you go, oh, wow. The future is mid-strength cannabis. Hey, yeah, the future is mids. The Primo future is mids. mids. Legit. Primo, Primo mids. mids. <laughs> Primo mids and one to ones. That's it. One to ones. One to ones, yeah. bro. Give me they out the warlock. Future. When yeah. one to ones kind of catch up a little bit, they're a bit behind in genetics. Yeah. I think there's going to be a tipping point where you're going to get like 15, 15 sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And that's where you're going to get like, I reckon so many people like, this is perfect for everyday yeah. use. I got to say, I got one. This, is, this goes out to all my uh, insomnia and chronic pain homies. Um, <laughs> all the people out there, the uh, relief critical Kush is a very, very, very positive cultivar, and we've had a lot of positive results and patient feedback uh, when it comes to treating symptoms of insomnia critical. and and chronic pain and things like that. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah, shout out, shout out to that one, and shout out to Barney's Farms, the creator of that mm-hmm. cultivar. Man, critical strains are just literally like yeah. sick like very yeah. fast flowering yeah. and they're fucking they get the job done yeah like they're really really good for that yeah. pain yeah yeah i love uh, this is what i mean like being able to have these conversations like so mm. cool that's the goal being able to sit with people and be like hey you should really think about looking at this amnesia profile because this amnesia has you know the right amount of lemonine and pinene for me that that i found really really uplifted me but also mitigated those really groggy feelings that i might get the morning after you know mm. and all that sort of stuff like this just cool like that's what it's all all about one of the best things i ever we ever heard on this podcast for me anyway was uh with jenny hallam um do you know who jenny hallam is oh, she was be. a big uh, advocate that got raided in, uh, south, australia. Was, uh, from, in south australia Shout out to her, man. and she was producing free oil for the medicinal community yeah, so i mean a sister right? putting it down for the home and she managed to get away with the charges which is very lucky like good on her big um anywho because she wasn't profiting at all yeah but um she said cannabis that like draws you by its smell, like you're into a particular one. Oh, That's yeah. your body saying, yeah. yes, this is what will work for you. There are absolutely aromatherapy studies that have looked at 
tasting cannabis with your nose mm. and then being able to assess a cultivar by smell and then associating with that positively and then having that positive association then in turn be positive when you consume it mm-hmm. and, and your experience with it. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with that. You know what I mean? I, I, I think that there is a big correlation and obviously correlation doesn't equal causation, but I think there's a big correlation between, you know, smelling cannabis and going, oh my God, and then having a really good experience and smelling cannabis and going, oh, what the fuck? And then not enjoying it whatsoever. You know? Yeah. I mean, couldn't I agree think, more I think that's a I think that's a real thing I think it's a real Same. thing for sure yeah. like at least in my experiences it's like an anecdotal correlation yeah. whenever I have yeah. like a you know it's a, whenever I have a strain that just kind of feels right and feels natural to me uh-huh. it has that smell it has mm-hmm. that kind of attraction yeah. and it makes me think perhaps it works in a similar way to pheromones or perhaps the brain or the mind just kind of is in touch with the unconscious with the body yeah. and so it's able to like positively associate and like release the chemical absolutely when you yeah. when you have like a certain scent yeah certain i feel experience. like when you smell something that you like you, there is definitely a dopamine response yeah you know yeah I mean? and you like you get that little like oh. yeah that whole thing um a housemate um uh he creeped out the other one because she was like um he was like sniffing it and mm. she's never had cannabis right mm. and um and she still hasn't anyway He's sniffing it and she's like, do you get high from that? And he's like, yeah. And so she didn't want to smell it. But the whole thing was, it's just, you know, he's getting that little like rush, like it smells good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I found that just hilarious. And then later I was, and she was asking, I was like, no, you don't get high from smelling it. It just, if you enjoy the smell, yeah, what you get a little What is the kind of high. person who gets lifted from, from yeah. just experiencing it in a really like dramatic way? Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. He's so connected to the sensory experience and yeah. the, it's really cool that some people can just um enter into the depths of that oh, i'm trying to learn that you know what i mean yeah yeah, oh. yeah it's just yeah. i get there but i don't stay there yeah you know you like mine's a very okay. short like war yeah it's cool it's mm. cool I, I really one one really cool little like part of my cannabis journey is is being able to actually pay attention to the finer things you know what i mean like being able to sit and i never understood people who were like you know into whiskeys and stuff like that and into wine you know what I, mean? I never got those connoisseurs all yeah like that. Cigar Even coffee people, you know, yeah, yeah, coffee. yeah and now you learn cannabis and you're like oh yeah all that shit now makes sense well, it makes so much sense <laughs> yeah like, i still don't understand it from their perspective because yeah. i drink wine and, like, i mean it that's the like thing wine. You're, you're always going to be a snob in one side of yeah things, yeah right? like you <laughs> yeah. kind of have to pick one yeah that's you it. pick that's something exactly. the um I, I do like the craft beers. Like, I, yeah. I, I can't lie. I do enjoy them. But, like, most of the time I'm like, yeah, it tastes good. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I can pick apart a bit of it and, like, what's going on. But some people have that, like, yeah, it's the hops, it's the this, it's the mm, this. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's kind of sweet to me and, I don't know, a little yeah, bubbly. Yeah, beer is very variable. Yeah. Tell you what. The, uh, but I do enjoy the craft beers. It's made beer way more interesting. Back in the day when we, I was younger, like, those 18 to 20 three, four, five. Yeah. It was all just fucking shitty lagers, like your Forex, your VB, your Carlton and shit. And you're like, it's all just tastes the exact same and it's shit. Yeah. And now you've got the crafties and it's like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. even the lagers have kind of stepped up their game. Yeah, yeah. There's better lagers now. Yeah. I'm, I'm into the sours. The sour beers, like, whoo, yeah. down the road, there's um, a sour, Sunny Boy Sour. Do you remember the Sunny Block yeah. Boy ice creams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an orange one and it's so fucking sour and it's 3.2 standards in a fucking can. See, you're into the sour beers. I'm into the Med Can Ultra Sour. <laughs> I understand. I understand. There you go. <laughs> but you're not into it. Well, I mean, Don't lie to the people. People. No, I mean, yeah, look, Medcan, that, it's not, not a winner, that one. I mean, your SCO1 and CCO1. The SCO1, um, so good. At, uh, uh, <laughs> my, um, one, of the, one of the guys I work with, um, one, of my, one of my bosses, Michael, um, he's, like, he's, like a, he's like a big brother to me, man. He's awesome. Shout out to him. Um, he loves the SCO1. Yeah. yeah he loves it. Yeah, I, he, he, always, he always talks about how, how gassy it is and how just true to strain name it actually smells, which is mm. awesome. You know, I think that's so cool. I think it's so cool that this plant has the potential to smell like so many like relatable things, like skills. Mm. And, the skittles and, blows my mind. It's like grapes. there's so many smells. And, yeah, oh, it's just it's gelatos. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like all these crazy things, and you're like, how can a plant smell like this? Mm. Like it's just it's full on. It's I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with understanding. What's interesting the to me is that it. I think. Like, you know, you've always had associations in the environment, but like Mm. having close up experiences with terpenes through cannabis, I think it kind of gives you like an appreciation for those sorts of scents when you're out and about Mm. in the world. Cannabis was my gateway to nature. 
Yeah, a sure. little bit. See, it was my gateway to nature. It's, yeah. it's actually like, I don't know, like as much as you, you, you see that in like food or in like flora, mm. you also just have that in, in day-to-day life. There's kind of like... A, a kind of atmospheric background yeah. smell. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird when you start activating really? like your yeah, nose. Yeah, you're just actually yeah, trying to, to crane yourself in yeah. scent. What the fuck is that? Yeah. So things, strange. Notice things. Yeah. The, probably the best smell experience of my life was when I was in Amsterdam for eight days. <laughs> because it would have been. The weed, fantastic. But do you know what the best thing about Amsterdam is? Yeah. Everyone grew fucking flowers from their like little balconies and in front of their house. Yeah. Like there was just flowers fucking everywhere. It's like a walking person. And yeah. like their flowers grown in like good soil and everything. Yeah. So like they're just blooming here. You know, when you buy store-bought flowers, yeah. they don't fucking have a smell. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck is this? It's all like shitty hydro there. flowers, yeah. you know? And it's just to look nice. Cuts but cuts when I was there, man, you're just walking through a street and it's like every street, everything's slow, like lined up, gridded and all yeah. that. It's just flowers. And you're just like, whoosh, what's that? What's Phenomenal. that? What's that? Like, yeah. you yeah. wouldn't want to be a hypochondriac sort of person. Yeah. Like, yeah. It'd suck. But I think, man. I think it's cool. Yeah. I think, I think for me, cannabis gave me the, I, it made me stop and ground myself with nature for sure. Cause yeah. like once I became obsessed with this plant, then I kind of like, paid attention to everything around. And it's so funny because, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm Italian. I come from an Italian background. So my family, you know, have gardens and they have the fruit trees and I never really connect. Didn't appreciate it. I didn't connect with it when I was growing up. Yeah. And now I do, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And now I'm, I'm, I love it more than anything. And, and it's like, it's like finding a, a missing piece of the puzzle for me, you know, something that I, I never knew I needed. And I was like, man, I need nature. I need plants. You know, I need to, I, I, I need to spend time with these things. You know what I mean? And now being able to go into the garden and appreciate just how plants work in general and be, being able to appreciate, you know, how an orange grows and how yeah, a yeah. lemon grows. There's nothing more satisfying and rewarding than when you grow something of your own. It's so good. Like Seed before we got raided, you know, yep. uh, like taking yep. care of that plant every night. We had one plant, one plant, yep. one plant only. Him. Just taking yep. care of that boy well girl and um no it was a it was a beautiful beautiful girl (laughs) with about 30 heads you know yeah yeah. and just you're just seeing this thing grow from literally nothing literally like a speck of dust like little tiny seed and then shooting up and then just expanding and then becoming this just ridiculous thing wipes the stigma away Oh man! Well, you know, we talk about like curing depression and anxiety. Yeah. What's that do for people? Like yeah. they literally have like gardening is proven to help with that. Hell yeah! So why can't we as patients that are treating that grow yeah. our own? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the goal. We are a very nurturing species. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We we thrive, and that makes us feel good. Like you know, that whole parental instinct. It's also showing time going by. Like it's um, patience. It teaches you patience. It would teach you patience for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of little micro lessons within growing yeah. cannabis like when I get into the garden with my grandfather and we plant you know our, our winter vegetables and our summer how many vegetables. tomatoes does your family grow a year <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a few different types of tomatoes as well yeah. which is the funniest part so every time we have a salad there's a lot going yeah a few on. yeah yeah there's just a lot going on and every time I don't want to come over it's just kind of like oh look at this and it's like this one's the size of my head this one's the size of my pinky like, and whoa. tomatoes are not easy to grow <laughs> they're really not if you find the right spot for them you're all good In the Queensland yeah. climate I think it's just a bit it's just tricky because yeah. it's like kind of too hot. It gets to like they'll grow VPD really right good now. and then it just smashes them. Yeah, you get that VPD. Right My now. mum has a spot though in her <laughs> yard that's just sh- shaded enough, but yeah. s- exposed enough. Man, she just produces like fifty like regularly. It's just a big giant bush that's just gotten over. It's so good. Yeah, and yeah. she never even planted it there intentionally. Really? Yeah, that was like a seed that somehow ended up there and it just became an insane tomato. And then she realized that was a great spot. <laughs> so that was. I'm trying to plant those better than you fucking a yeah yeah cherry tomatoes grow fine here though i like to do those yeah hell yeah Mm. perfect environment for it not bad wow oh all right so we're on to gardening i mean where should we go from here should we start wrapping yeah maybe we should close up it's been about an hour yeah 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 i feel like we've had a really good chat though yeah i've enjoyed it awesome thank you guys so much for having me it's been so amazing and it's been such a blessing and a privilege to be here um i feel like a kid yeah i feel like such a kid Uh, it's it's cool it's cool to be able to you know uh, jump on a platform and and just talk about the thing that i love you know so much um and hopefully you know inspire just one person to have a conversation 
with somebody and and potentially explore cannabis and change their perspective because that's what it's all about. Yeah, amazing. That's what it's all dude. about. Thanks yeah. for bringing your energy, your passion, and your no, knowledge. Thank you. To thank the you. Table. It's been really. The good. industry's moving forward, and I promise I've, the good people like us, we're going to keep doing it. It's going to be good. I've loved the excitement. I've loved the energy. It's like very refreshing to be around someone else who feels very similar towards the plant, the industry, and just the world in general. <laughs> so I think um, you're a homie. Thank, thank you, you very much. Love. It's it's been a good night. And with that, good night. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Uh, We're bringing this to a close now. <laughs> See ya.